Hey guys, if you haven't already, give the video a like, subscribe to my channel. This is a what if series and I'll be doing more down the road. Plus Ultra. Hey guys, and welcome to What If Goku Landed in Fairy Tale Part 6. So, it's been a while since we touched on this series, but I was cooking up more and more juicy details and topics to go upon for this upcoming episode. So sit back and grab some snacks, you're in for a ride. And yes, I was like pushing this off for just not too long, but just for a little bit because it was just so much stuff I had to add and touch upon since I didn't touch upon in the first parts. And something I'm retconning is when I was ending part five of What If Goku Landed in Fairy Tale, I said I would upload part two. That was stupid. Part six, I meant. Now that that's out the way, let's get into the story. So we before we start the episode, I want to talk about what Vegeta has been doing all this time. Since he's gotten beaten by beaten by Goku and is no longer a part of Phantom Lore, and I didn't mention before, but due to Goku's caring nature, he wouldn't give Vegeta. I mean, he would have gave Vegeta a sense of being. Vegeta would look at this very weirdly, but Goku would further explain that this being being will heal all your injuries and put you back into fighting condition. Now, Vegeta. Now, Vegeta would eat the bean and would be shocked that it healed him up like everything but it put him back in fighting condition you now vegeta would have gotten a zenkai boost from this a huge zenkai boost from this but his pride is badly broken due to the fact that he's been training all his life and kakarot a low-class saiyan warrior managed to achieve super saiyan that angers him so without saying anything vegeta just scoffs and flies away so I pretty much went into detail about what I missed in part three and four so now that we're all caught up with that let's get into what Vegeta has been doing this whole time so Vegeta has been wondering and training wherever he ends up trying to figure out how to get Super Saiyan just like Goku but mostly he's been trying to find his way Phantom Lore only ever taught him since he's been on this earth is to take steel and kill. Take steel and kill. Basically, he was a stuck up jerk. They only cared about his growth and with something, well, and was something like a prodigy, given the fact how frequently he trained and his capabilities, even though he doesn't go by the name anymore. People, people have often started calling him Dark Prince Vegeta. Thank you, Zenchu. You got to tell me how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry, man. But it will, you know, one of you guys named Zenchu in the comments preferred to gave me like, uh, you you guys said something about, well, he said something about having Goku be called Lightbringer Goku and Dark Prince Vegeta. I'm going to take the Dark Prince Vegeta. I already got something else. I'm going to call Goku sort of like a Dragon Mage Goku anyway. But thank you for giving that like, because I like that touch with Dark Prince Vegeta. That just sounds so, that sounds so cool. But anyway, that was when he was with Phantom Lore. Now he doesn't know what his name, what his name stands for anymore. Now while Vegeta, now while Vegeta is wondering, he basically stumbles upon this guild. Kate Shelter Guild. Unlike in the canon, we're going to change up a few things. So as Vegeta makes his way into the village where he's greeted by the townspeople, or the citizens, whatever you want to call it. This is where he also meets Wendy and Carla. Now the townspeople aren't too familiar with Vegeta, so they don't know him by his nickname. But there's a reason why. Vegeta can't hear in the, well, Vegeta came here in the first place was to seek atonement for his actions, to basically find peace, or to see the side of the glass that Kakarot sees. He sent some incredible yet calm energy from the guild master, which was an elderly man. What brings you here, my boy? I have nowhere else to go. I'm seeking atonement, but I don't, I don't think my sins can ever be forgiven. Rubal, the guild master, would have looked Vegeta up and down and since that he's and he would sense that he's a warrior, a strong warrior at heart. Follow me, my boy. I think I have the answers you're looking for. 
So Vegeta would have went with the master. And from there, they would have talked for seven hours. Now, the guild master would have persuaded Vegeta to stay and help out the guild. Now, this is the atonement that Vegeta was looking for. He would do just that. But he isn't there to make friends. So he goes on missions, helps out other guilds when they need assistance. While Kate Shelter Guild didn't have many strong fighters, it did, ha it didn't, it did have a little girl who did have promise, which Vegeta took interest in. Now, after spending some time, more than months with the Kate Shelter Guild, Vegeta and Wendy have grown close to each other, like a strict father and teacher. Although he didn't get have to get well, although he did have to get past Carla and gain her permission to train Wendy, given the fact how protective she was over her. Now Carla would have said yes, giving way for Vegeta to train Wendy. So they start with the basics: key control and magic control. And Vegeta's training won't be easy. Now, since Wendy is a Sky Dragon Slayer and has the ability to heal. Her training would be way, way more fruitful. Something like a Zenkai boost or a prodigy. Anyway, on the day of Wendy's birthday, her being 14, she would have started to look like her like her Adolis counterpart. Just about 30% in terms of features. Now, the Kate Shelter Guild would send Vegeta and Wendy on a mission. And on this mission, they have encountered a foe named Blink, who was a really strong fighter. And at the time, Vegeta couldn't transform into the Super Saiyan into Super Saiyan. So Blank was giving them a very, very hard time. Each counter that they did or attack that they threw at Blank would be nullified in terms of speed. Blank, his name is pretty self-explanatory. His powers of magical, well, his powers or magical powers allowed him to blank around his opponents, making it somewhat hard for his enemies to get a hit on him. Now, Vegeta, Carla, and Wendy would be trying their best, and I mean their absolute best to fight against Blank, but he was a strong adversary. Now, I'm go not going to explain or further go into detail about Blink's abilities because he's one of those strong type throwaway characters. Anyway, Vegeta and Wendy would be battle damaged heavily. Carla would be knocked out and co like knocked out cold and Blink would be laughing hysterically. You all, you all are so weak. Give me a real battle. Or is this all you can manage to do? The mighty Dark Prince Vegeta and the Sky Dragon Slayer Wendy. I would have thought that you two would have put up more of a challenge, but I guess I gave you too much credit. Now, Vegeta and Wendy's pride was mocked. This would be twice for Vegeta and he's had it. No more as he clenched his fist. Him and Wendy got off the ground and you see the both of them look at Blink with an angry scowl. Golding look. This yellow hue would be would, like would be surrounding Vegeta as he gets angrier and angrier. And the same applies to Wendy. This purple hue would surround her, and the both of them would scream out as their energies shoot towards the sky. Blank would be wondering what's going on. The ground is shaking, and the earth like it, it's trembling. Ah, uh, finally! Yes, show me your resolve. As the smoke clears from the from them powering up, you see that both Wendy and Vegeta have obtained a new form. Vegeta finally became a Super Saiyan, and Wendy was using her Dragon Force. Now Blink started off as cocky, but when everything cleared and he could feel the pressure and the intensity of their power, a sweat dropped down his head. What? Am I getting nervous? Blank would go on to say in his head. Now something I do have to mention is that Wendy's personality would be 50% of her own and 50% of Vegeta's. Just to give you a clear idea of what's going to happen and how our actions about this, like getting rid of a bad seed. Anyway, they would waste no time and rush Blink with a combination of attacks. Wendy was using her Sky Dragon magic powers to enhance her strength and speed while in her Dragon Force form. And Vegeta was basically blitzing Blink left and right. Sure, you have the power to Blink around your opponent, but what happens when that opponent can perceive to where you're going to appear next? Wendy would go on to comment, well, Wendy would go on to comment, he's right, as Blink got hit with a huge... Sky Dragon Roar 
and followed by a huge gut punch to the ground. Wendy and Vegeta would be in the sky, looking down at Blink and extend their hands towards him, yelling, die, and Blink would be no more. Now they would power down and be exhausted from using too much power. I mean, they were battle damage, so this would take a toll on their bodies. The two of them would make their way back to the Kate Shelter Guild and relax, eat food, and Vegeta would state to Wendy that they need to train and get a handle on their new powers. She would agree, and they would go off into the forest to train. And this would be a change with Vegeta. You can see the shift of Vegeta becoming the good character that he was in Dragon Ball Super. And st like the small shift that when you've seen at the end of Dragon Ball Z. Now, as far as the case shelter good, I just wanted Vegeta to meet Wendy. And as far as her aging, I put Wendy at the age of 13 instead of being at the age of 12. So she at the age of 13 and gradually was about to turn it was just a few more months before she turned 14 so yeah if you need more indication about that because i don't want nobody saying it, but wendy's but wendy is 12 though yeah and, and this one she's 14 so yeah it's and it's for a reason because i got plans of how strong i want wendy to become and what wendy's going to be doing in this period of time anyway so let's continue and that would be what vegeta has been doing been up to all this time so yeah i kind of wanted vegeta redemption to be somewhat helpful towards the case shelter guild now back to the main time goku manages to teleport to where gohan and urza are and when he got there gohan was in a very intense battle with jalal now remember i told you that they struck the tower of heaven and turned it into a huge lacrim because crystal now gohan and urza were like urza when she got there she was doing the same thing that she did in canon fighting off with jalal and then when the tower got hit gohan was standing there and wondering why his mom wasn't attacking why his mom wasn't doing anything and when the tower got hit he thought like everyone was dead but he seen that jalal was smiling and he laughed hysterically now jalal would stand up saying stating that this was all a part of his plan was for the tower of heaven to get hit with the power of the ethereon blast this would make gohan mad as he looked at his mother and saying you got let your guard down and you got deceived this guy just basically baited you into letting this place get hit by that huge power what if we all died you were just gonna let that happen mom ursa would feel conflicted by this because Right now, she didn't want ne necessarily want to hurt the friend that she looked looked towards, well, the friend that she was with during the Tower of Heaven, but her son. What would have happened if the blast would have hit the Tower of Heaven and it would have disintegrated them all? Her son would have been, like, lost her life, even Goku, her husband, and possibly her. She hates herself that she let her guard down for this and stands back up and tells Gohan, I'm sorry. Gohan right now feels the anger bubbling up in his body and he looks at Jalal saying you've deceived my mom for the last time and rushes Jalal with speed. Now when I say intense battle with Jalal now Gohan's powers would be almost similar to that of Brawley's. When I say almost I mean his power level would be like 8,600 and this was due to his mother and father's training him to be stronger in this universe Gohan was more interested in becoming a fighter and also being half wizard half Saiyan Gohan would be toying with Jalal no matter what he did every spell he tried to cast or attack he tried to throw at Gohan it would be counter-attacked at this point Goku and Urza were amazed at their son's potential he had two brilliant teachers so I would highly doubt that with all Jalal's techniques, he wouldn't be able to hold a candle to Gohan. Now, this isn't me. Lowball is saying that Jalal would be extremely weak or is a weak character. That's not the case. Gohan has been training with his mother and father since he was four years old. And seeing the amount of potential that Gohan had in the Dragon Ball Z series, and also want to mention that with some hard training from Piccolo, got him to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kefla in the manga. So in terms of power, Jalal isn't winning this fight. Now for everything that Jalal has done to his mother, Gohan hit him with a powerful Kamehameha that sent him out of the Tower of Heaven. Now, due to the amount of damage the Tower of Heaven took, it was about to explode. Now, now, unlike in canon, Urza wouldn't have to sacrifice herself like that, like she did in canon. Instead, Goku teleported her away to where the others were and teleported back. And him and, and, him and Gohan managed to nullify the explosion, saving lives. Now, not Sue, Grey, Lucy, and everybody were worried, even Urza, but she seen that Gohan and Goku were fine. Now everything would play out as normal as it did in canon, but when Urza's childhood friends would 
were about to leave to set off on their own journey, they would have a much huger send off than they did in canon. With Goku and Gohan doing a huge Kamehameha and yeah. So everything played out as normal as that did in canon. Now we're going to continue on to the magic well, the fairy magic, the tournament with the Loxus, and pretty much I'm going to go into detail. I'm not going to skip that all at all. So around this point is when Gajio would like be in the guild. Natsu would question why Gajio is there. Most of the members, well, the three that Levy and her two friends, well, I got to remember the names. I keep remembering their names. I don't remember key people names, even though they've been in a part of the story like that. But Levy would be behind her two friends and telling them you you better not do anything stupid gajio wouldn't be paying attention to it and he would just walk away natsu would wonder why wakaruf has let gajio this person who wrecked their guild and hurt their friends join after the damage that he's done and the pain that he's caused not like master makaruf will be looking at natsu and say everyone deserves a redemption i sense great good in this boy's heart possibly he's just let down the wrong path so, just give him a chance, my boy. I'm pretty sure he'll warm up. Well, you will warm up to him. Just give it time. Now, everything would play out with that up until the point to where... Oh, and that's something I do have to mention is that Goku would agree with Master Makarov stating that everyone deserves a second chance. If you can have a chance for redemption, which you know, Goku's known as... Then, why don't you just give him that chance? I mean, he's not too bad, is he? Now, everything would play out as normal with that until the point where Gajio is sent outside and the two, well, friends of Levy basically got out there and they told Gajio that it's payback for what he did to, did to them. So they would start beating the shit out of him like they did in canon. And at this point is where Loxus would show up and he would tell the two, like, the two of them, are you done? And this is where Loxus would start... Like saying that everyone at this guild is weak, including him who destroyed the guild. And this is where Loxus would get mad that his father let some phantom lord garbage join the guild and start beating, hitting this man with a bunch of lightning attacks. Now, this is where Goku would fly in and punch Loxus dead in the face, sending him tumbling on the ground. And he would say, that's enough. What are you, why are you hurting your fellow guild members? Loxus would stand up and look at Goku and say, guild members? Guild members? Oh, you. Now, this is the slight change that I did. So, I didn't necessarily want it to even progress to the fight, like the whole tournament or Lox is going against Fairy Tail. No. What I wanted to do is have an all out battle between Goku and Loxus because it was heavily anticipated. Heavily, heavily, like in my, like when I was scripting this, I knew these two were going to butt heads with each other. At this point right here is when it's going to happen. So, back then when Goku was little, Loxus and Goku would always be butting heads with each other. And it would be Loxus winning two fights, Goku winning three fights, Loxus winning three fights, Goku winning six fights, Loxus winning five fights, Goku winning 16 fights after that. So, you can see how the gap is between these two and why God Loxus basically at this point can't stand Goku. He knows Goku is strong, possibly even, well not possibly, and he knows Goku's Stronger than him. I'm going to say that. Stronger than him. So as these two are looking at each other, he Loxus would go on to say to Goku that everyone in this guild hall is weak. And I'm going to like do some kind of whole tournament thing to have everyone fight against each other to see who was the strongest. And I'm going to take over the guild. I only want strong people in my guild hall. And Goku would be like, see, this is why your grandpa hasn't gave you the guild yet. You're not fit to be a leader. I don't know where all this anger is coming from, Loxus, but you're kind of resembling your father. And this is where Loxus would charge at Goku, and Goku and him would get into a fist fall with each other, throwing punches. Now, Goku would be basically dodging and weaving each and one of Loxus' punches, and this is where Goku would notice that Loxus did indeed get a lot stronger than he was back then when they were sparring against each other. So, Loxus would punch Goku in the stomach, kick Goku in the face, and slam him against the ground. And Goku would be surprised at this, but get excited from this because Loxus did get a little stronger. So, Goku would then counter attack with his own movesets, delivering a thunderous punch to Gox, Lox's stomach and making him cough up spit, then slamming him to the ground and kicking him into a nearby tree, breaking the tree in half. 
Now Goku would say, come on Loxus, I thought you were training all this time. This makes no sense to be that weak. Now this is Goku basically taunting Loxus to make him more angry to see just how strong Loxus can get. And Goku basically gets into his fighting stance and says, here I come. And in a blitz of speed, he was right there in Loxus's face. Now Loxus did a whole thunderbolt attack and caught Goku in it, well, like a parry. And Goku got caught in it, but little to nothing, it did minimal damage. I mean, it didn't do as much as Loxus thought it would do. So, I mean, look at how, like, I'm going to state it like this. So, you know how when Goku has his transformations and he's been training as much as he did and the amount of power that his body has put out, it would make his base form more durable than what you think it would be. So, most attacks won't hurt him as much. Now, I'm not going to say the lightning attack, he just basically tanked that shit like some Yujiro Hama type shit. No. The attack that he it tanked, it was it just did nothing to like it wasn't strong enough or not potent enough. And Loxus seeing this, Loxus would get very, very angry, and the both of them would then continue on with their battle, destroying a lot of the area around. Now, this is where some of Loxus' teammates would start to worry about this, and Goku and Loxus would be in a very intense battle with it. Now, this is where some of the teammates would start to basically put the whole fairy tale in their whole quit. Now I said I wouldn't do it, but that's not stopping the team from doing. So the team would put the whole fairy tale in their whole basically flop thing like that. And Loxus would tell them to commence with everything that they said they were doing. Now everything would play out normal with that with all teams fighting each other, but Goku and Loxus would just be locked into a battle, with Loxus having to transform into his whole dragon like force form. Now Goku wouldn't be phased by this at all. He would see this and say, hmm and I will show you my transformation. Goku would transform into a Super Saiyan and the immense pressure would throw Loxus back. Now Loxus would look at Goku and he would be surrounded by this yellow hue of energy just shooting up everywhere. Like, and then Loxus would run at Goku, but just in a swift motion. Loxus got punched in the stomach hard. I'm talking about so hard that you seen the air come like expel from Loxus back and Loxus would fall out unconscious. Now this is where Goku would teleport all over Fairy Tail and basically just body each and every one of Loxus. I mean, he bodied each and every one of Loxus friend well teammates. I gotta remember their name. I think I remember more, like three of their names. I just gotta remember it. It's been a minute since I've been, I mean, I only focus on the main, don't quote me, I only focus on the main characters such as Levi, Lucy, Urza, Makarov, and so on and so forth. You mean Jose, and like so on and so forth. I focus on the main strong characters that I like to see more often. Anyway, everything played out normal with that, and that basically clears up that whole arc with the, like the team being captured, and at this point, Everything will play out as normal with Makarov basically telling Loxus that you attacked your guild, you are out for power, and this is the same, this is the reason why I didn't give you the guild, because you were displaying the same actions that your father was displaying, like, your father was displaying. You got too power hungry and too, and you wanted to control. You were going down the same route as him, and this is where I'm going to have to expel you from the fairy tale guild. And Loxus would have tears in his eyes, and he would say, thank you for everything, old man. As Makarov would be crying from the decision that he had to make. But it was a decision that he did to protect the guild from Loxus at this point in time. Now Loxus would walk out, but Goku and Natsu, they would be wondering why Loxus got kicked out. But that's the story for the next part. Anyway, thank you guys for watching as far as you did. Thank you guys for the support. I'm sorry that this took so long, but I wanted to put as much juicy details in part 6 as... I hope you guys like it. The backstory of what Vegeta been doing and now continuing on everything. I know it's a bit blotched and everything's everywhere, but hope you guys like it. And just to let you know that it's not going to be a light go. If you guys show some, this video some support, I will release part like seven in the future. I mean, I will release it as soon as possible. Just give me time. Anyway, without any further ado, you guys have a good day, a good night, and plus ultra. Good night.